Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm in the workshop again today with my Triumph Scrambler 1200 and I'm looking at the front brake. In fact, what I'm going to do is fit some new pads on the front brakes. So if you're interested in seeing that procedure, please uh, follow along. Now the pads that I'm going to fit are these, which are the EBC double H rated sintered pads. If you're interested, you can probably see the reference number on there, but the EBC reference number for this bike, which is the Scramber 1200 XE, and that's with the Brembo radially mounted uh, brakes on it, the reference number is FA447HH. And obviously the HH is for the double H rated pads. So just a little bit of background on this. Um, I fitted these pads to most of the bikes that I own and uh, my experience has been that it dramatically improves the braking performance of the bike. Um, now the brakes on the uh, Triumph are terrific, they're really good brakes, as I said they are Brembo regularly mounted uh, brakes, but, but I feel that they could be better, particularly they could have better feel than they have. And I'm comparing it to my Norton Commando 961, which has very similar brake setup and um, you know the brakes on that have absolutely terrific feel. So I'm going to give the front brakes a quick service and put these uh, new pads in and I'm hoping that it's going to dramatically improve the performance, even though that performance is already very good. Now, this, as I say, this is something I've done on my other bikes, and you might have seen the video that I posted of me uh, doing some work on my um, old Triumph Bonneville T140, and I'm going to be doing some more work on that very shortly, so I'll be posting a, a video of um, sorting out the braking even better on that. But w with re reference to, to these uh, brake pads, my Harley Davidson Fat Bob, when I bought that, which is some, what, 14 years ago now, uh, the brakes were never terrific. And in fact, Harley Davidson's have got a reputation for not having terrific brakes. And so I actually serviced the brake master cylinder and the front calipers, because it's got twin discs on the front of the Fat Bob, and uh, fitted these, um, these uh, EBC double H rated pads and it totally transformed the braking performance on my Harley Davidson. And when I say transformed it, I mean that before I did that work, uh, stopping the bike was a, a four white knuckle job. Whereas after me servicing the master cylinder and the calipers and then fitting these new um, uh, brake uh, pads, then the brake stops easily and confidently with just two finger braking on the front brake. Total transformation. So even though the brakes are not too bad on, on this uh, Triumph, as I say, I feel that they could be better and I'm hoping to get much better performance by giving the brakes just a, a, a very quick and simple service and fitting these new pads. So let's get on with it. In order to get optimum performance out of your brakes, you need to make sure that they're set up properly. I'm just showing you the front brake lever on the scrambler here because there's actually a great deal of adjustability on here. So the first thing I did was adjust this to fit my, uh, fit my needs. So you've got an adjustment for the reach of the um, lever. So you can get you know, how far that lever sticks out or how close it is to the handlebars. And then you've got another adjuster on this side for the uh, amount of leverage which is applied when you pull on the on the brake so you can increase or decrease the amount of leverage obviously with increasing the leverage you get more movement from it um, but that then allows you to you know maybe get uh, a nicer feel on the brakes if you if you feel more confident with braking like that so it's important to mess around and when i got the bike at first i messed around with the setting of both of these so that i was happy with with the where the lever was and the the lever action it's always a bit of a battle setting the camera up in a location where you can see what i'm doing clearly and yet it's not in my way so hopefully we're good here so uh, there's just the two mounting bolts for these radially mounted, uh, so this is the right hand one, so I'm just going to knock these off, they're quite tight, they're about 55 newton meters of these when they're torqued down, so they're pretty tight. So the procedure for, for removing the front caliper is fairly straightforward, you just need to take out these two bolts and then slide the caliper off the disc.
There we are. And um, there's still quite a bit of life left on those pads, but I'm, I'm going to change them. And you can see from how far the piston's out, they're, you know, they're, they're worn down a fair bit. So let's knock those pads out and then um, we'll have a clean up of the caliper and then I'll put the new pads in. These pads are quite simple to remove. There's no retaining pins on the, the, the design of this particular caliper. You just need to uh, push the, the pads out towards the centre and there's a little lug on each end. Maybe see the, the lug there and the lug there. Puts in a little recess and when you push, push them out um, then the, uh, the uh, pad will drop out. And see that I just need a little bit more room there because it's not this one's pushed out so far that I've not quite got enough room. So what I need to do is push those pistons back in a little bit, um, which you can do just by applying a little bit of force with the screwdriver. As I'm uh, throwing these pads, it doesn't really matter. So push the top one out and get the lugs clear. And that's the pad comes out and then comes out and there we are that's both the pads out fairly straightforward so as you saw I pushed these uh, pistons in a little bit I'm going to pump them out a little bit further because what I want to do is just clean around all around here um, before I um, put the new pads in and of course with pushing the uh, the piston back in there the problem is that you know, if there's any dirt or corrosion on that piston it's going to stick on the on the seals the easiest way to push the pistons back out is just to uh, just to pump on the on the brake lever, but you just got to keep an eye to make sure that they come out evenly. You can see the top ones are coming out a little bit further than the bottom ones there. But what I'm looking for is that it comes out further than it was before, so I'm seeing clean bit on the piston there, and you can see there's actually quite a bit of cack round there. Sorry, cack's the technical term. Quite a lot of dirt round there. Um, which is just from, from winter riding. So what I'm going to do is get, um, well I'll start off with some uh, soapy water and a toothbrush and just clean around there and then I'll clean it off with some uh, brake cleaner, some proper brake cleaner. Right, I'll just pop some uh, latex gloves on here because I don't want to get all this muck on my hands and I'm just, this is just some warm water with a bit of washing up liquid in it which will help get the dirt off here. They're not too bad these actually, considering that I've been riding all through the winter with all the salt on the roads. Um, not looking too bad at all. You just want to prevent the build up of corrosion and dirt on here though if possible. But I'm very pleased to see that all that stuff is just washing straight off. see that they've come up quite nicely actually just trying to get this toothbrush into all the nooks and crannies nicely done right I'm going to blow that off with my airline to dry it off a little bit and then uh, I'll uh, put some um, brake cleaner on it as well. A bit of newspaper to uh, catch the dirt. And hopefully you can see there that those pistons have come up quite nicely. Yeah they really have. Still a bit of marking there. Might be worth actually just turning the pistons round slightly so I can get to the back of them. I've got a like a piston tool, so I'll get on there and just spin them round and then I can clean all the way around. I don't know if you can see that too clearly, but this is a, a, a set of piston uh, pliers, brake piston pliers, um, a Draper Expert uh, model of these. See, so there's this little uh, knurled bit at the end which just goes inside your piston, helps you grip the piston, which Obviously it's for removing them, but if I put it in, in there you can see it just makes it very easy to turn the turn the piston inside the calibre there if you want to 
be able to inspect all the way around so you can see as I've turned that there's still a bit of corrosion on there so a little bit there and a little bit there as well might just attack those with a bit of very very fine wire wool just to get that corrosion off this is 0000 steel wool which is extremely fine which is not going to cause um, deep scratches and gouges but uh, should help get that uh, corrosion off so I've just got a little wad of that get in here just very lightly wiping the, the pistons because you can see the pistons have a coating which I don't want to damage re-emphasize this is very very fine steel wool and that's just I'm just wiping it very very lightly and that's lifting that uh, corrosion nicely so I shall continue on each of these pistons turning them just checking that's actually just dirt on there so I'm just going to use my tissue on that Okay, so I'm going to do that with all four pistons, no need to bore you watching it, but just going to do that, just keep rotating them, make sure that it's all nice and clean. Right, uh, I think that's good, that only took a couple of minutes, but uh, no need to bore you with all of that. Um, and there were only actually just a couple of very small spots that I had to touch with the, this, this, this very fine steel wool, the rest of it I just wiped it with this uh, tissue and uh, it, it came off but hopefully you can see there hopefully the camera's picking up how the pistons are all nice and clean and shiny now all the way around and all the way to the end so um, now hopefully they will move freely so what I'm going to do now is wind these pistons all the way back in um, because I'm fitting new pads which obviously are going to be much thicker now one thing that you have to watch if you're doing this is your fluid level in your reservoir on the master cylinder so I'll be keeping an eye on that but it should be fine and I've got this um, tool okay it's another draper tool draper expert tool which is um, for winding those um, uh, pistons back in you insert it in between here and then it pushes them both back in if you haven't got one of these tools an alternative is to is to do it with a piece of soft wood or that's not going to damage the pistons or you can put the brake pads back in the old ones that you're not going to use so it doesn't matter if you damage them and then leave them with a, a screwdriver but either way you want to get all the four pistons pushed fairly well back in hopefully you can see that I've got all the all four pistons wound back there now so I'm just going to give that all a last uh, clean up before I fit the new pads and um, I'm going to do that with some brake, brake cleaner spray got some newspaper underneath here to catch the drips and just give it a good clean out okay, I might just use this brush again on that spring Don't know if you can see, but that spring's in good condition. There's actually no corrosion on the spring, just a bit of dirt on it, which is washing off. But the spring's not corroded. If it gets really corroded, need to, to change it. Right, that does largely evaporate off, but I wipe the dirt off, as much dirt off as I can here. Right, give that a moment just for the rest of the brake cleaners to evaporate off. And then we'll fit the new pads. Right, time to fit the new pads. So it's fairly easy, there's just a lug which goes into the slot on each end. So you push the lug into to one side and then you have to press down the pad against the retaining spring and then it got whoops trapped my glove in there that's it right so that that's that pad then pushed 
in and then you repeat that for the other side. So drop the lug into the slot at one side, push against the spring and then just make sure that the pad is, is pushed right back in. Just use this screwdriver to line it up. Right, that's the pads in. So now I can remount the caliper. And first of all, I just put these retaining bolts in loosely just to make sure everything is lined up properly. So I'm going to tighten those down until there's still a little bit of movement in the caliper. That they're actually seated. Then I'm going to pump the um, brake to pump the uh, pads out and then I'll just make sure everything is aligned. So just pumping the pads out. Right, hopefully you can see the pads there and as I pump on the front brake you can see the pads going in and I can feel now that they have seated. I've got resistance on the brake lever. They have seated against the disc. I'm just going to check the alignment of the pads and the caliper carefully. Now it's difficult to film but I'm going to get torch out and just uh, make sure they're all lined up and then what I'll do is I will tighten up the the bolts on the caliper, the, these two retaining bolts lightly so that it's then firmly seated and then double check the alignment and then I'll torque them down to 55 newton meters. Okay, so I've checked everything's aligned here. I'm happy that everything's aligned. There's nothing binding or catching. Brake pads and the caliper all aligned. So I've already tightened this up, but I'm just going to torque it down now to 55 Newton meters, which I'll do it in a couple of steps. It's quite tight, it's 55 Newton meters. So we're good there. That's the right hand side done. So I'll do exactly the same procedure on the left caliper and that's my brakes serviced and new calipers fitted.
One thing which I should add at this point is that it is important when you fit a new brake pads to break them in. So just go uh, gently with them at first because uh, they need to break in as they as they bed in with the uh, the disc. So for the uh, first uh, few miles, um, you know, I'll be taking it easy on on those brakes. But hopefully, as as they bed in, the performance is really going to improve on the old pads. So that's both lots of brake pads fitted. So the last job now is I'm just going to the master cylinder reservoir and checking the fluid level because obviously with fitting new pads that pushes the pistons back in which pushes fluid back up into the reservoir. But I don't know if you can see, if I turn it, you can see that that's the level just, just there. You can just maybe see a slightly lighter line there. So the fluid is... Towards the, if I turn the handlebars more, you can see it drops down there. Now there's about a centimetre down there. So it's towards the top of the cylinder, but it's not too high. I'm happy with that. So that's fine. Right, so that's the new pads fitted. Regard that as job done. Um, I hope you found that useful. If you've not done that job before, you can see it's a fairly straightforward job to do. It's taken me maybe about just maybe about 40 minutes, I, have, I didn't check exactly, and that includes faffing around with the camera for, for timing, so it's not a huge job. If I wasn't trying to film it all, it would have taken a, a lot less time, and that includes taking quite a bit of time making sure that those pistons were clean as well. So thanks for watching, hope you found that interesting and useful, hopefully see you again next time, bye.